Hello, BookTube. Well, it's the morning after. The morning after a presidential debate in which, for the very first time in American history, a presidential candidate said he would not necessarily honor the peaceful transition of power on Election Day if he loses. So I thought, what better time for a U.S. presidential biography starter kit? <laughs> and I've, uh, I've made one. Uh, with some quick recommendations for you. I have read, as far as I know, every biography ever written of every U.S. president. I find it absolutely fascinating, specifically for the reason that was brought under threat last night, because the U.S. president has, over 250 years, gradually become a more powerful single individual in an office than has ever existed even in regnal times, uh, and yet, not a king. Checkable, thwartable, mockable. Uh, I find that fascinating, that combination of uh, democratic accountability, at least a little, and despotic power. And uh, the men who've held the office have always found it fascinating as well. Uh, and so have their biographers. I, I, I'm tremendously impressed uh, by the sheer quality of writing that U.S. presidents have evoked from historians over the last two centuries. And uh, I wanted to give a, a quick starter kit, just to, a, a nod in that direction. I could make a 10-point recommendation list for virtually every president, <laughs> but I won't do that this time around, I promise. Uh, and uh, I wanted to start with a blanket recommendation. It's not all U.S. presidents, but it is a great book on modern U.S. presidents, everybody uh, in, since, you know, the 1950s. Uh, and it's American Caesars by Nigel Hamilton, who is great anyway. He's a fantastic historian and biographer. Uh, but if you see that book, I highly encourage you to get it if the subject interests you, because it's fantastic from start to finish. Uh, but this list that I made here is, it's, it's irrespective of, for instance, there are <laughs> There are good U.S. presidents, and there are great U.S. presidents, and the, not all the great presidents are good presidents, and not all the good presidents are great presidents, and there's no there's no accounting for that, and there's there's no getting around it. Uh, this is not meant to be a greatest presidents list, and it's not it's it's mainly meant to to zero in on uh, the on the combination of really good biography and and really good subject matter. Uh, so. It, you know, this won't be, this isn't a ranking. It's not meant to be in any way. Like, for instance, I have a note here, uh, The Shadow of Blooming Grove by Francis Russell is an absolutely great book about Warren Gamaliel Harding, about President Harding. And, you know, that's, it's a perfect, that's a perfect example of a fantastic work of history being done uh, about a less than fantastic president, about a president that most people don't know anything about. Um, uh, and I've also weighted this list a little bit towards the present uh, because U.S. presidents have grown in power. The, the office has grown in power as time has gone on, so it has become historically more important and more interesting uh, the closer we get to the present day. The present day being a perfect example where the President of the United States, by all accounts, an intelligent and upright man, can order executively drone executions of people all over the world, including U.S. citizens, without running it by Congress, without having it vetted by any kind of law. That's an incredible amount of power that, that President Obama is going to hand on to, it looks like, Hillary Clinton. I don't know for sure that that's true, especially since her opponent has said he's not going to concede. So who knows how many presidents we'll have on November 8th. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but of course, when it comes to a presidential starter kit, the, the only place you can start is is George Washington, who is uh, extremely venerated and always has been in this country. I have spent most of my writing life attacking that veneration. Washington is considered a great statesman, an august person, a tactical and strategic genius. None of that is true. He was a, a blundering, petty, mean-minded slave owner, a moron. Uh, but good luck getting that out of any of his biographies. It just doesn't happen. Uh, and it, I, I don't have one to recommend that does that. For instance, the most popular uh, uh, Washington biography of all is The Indispensable Man by James Thomas Flexner. And it is a really good book historically, but it's hagiography from start to finish. It, it, and uh, it, it, if, if it is, then 
Ron Chernow's recent book on George Washington, oh my God, <laughs> it's even worse. It actually prompted a very long review by me that I'll, I'll leave in the description if I remember it. I always remember, I always try to remember to leave pertinent stuff in the description. If I don't do that, remind me, because it's just that I've forgotten. Uh, uh, but in addition to The Indispensable Man for Washington, there's also a book that I've mentioned on this channel before. It's by Richard Norton Smith, who's another great biographer, and it's called Patriarch. And like the best studies of Washington, it's, it's a study of studies of Washington as well as a study of Washington. So if you see Patriarch, I strongly recommend that as well. Uh, number two, we move on to John Quincy Adams, the son of President John Adams, uh, and an, an utterly fascinating figure in his own right, someone that I have written about and read about my whole life. Uh, and I recommend a book by Phyllis Lee Levin, called The Remarkable Education of John Quincy Adams. It's, it's fantastic. It's fairly new, so your library will have it for sure. And it's well worth your time to, to underscore how unusual this, this guy was. Uh, then number three is a figure in history that I hate, Andrew Jackson, but uh, I, I can't recommend the book high enough. It's American Lion by John Meacham, a, a copy of which uh, one of you just sent me recently. Uh, it's a, it's a first-rate biography. Meacham is usually very good and never better than with this book. So although I personally hate Jackson, uh, the book is well worth your time. Uh, and number four, of course, it's Abraham Lincoln. Uh, there's no way around him either, Washington and Lincoln. There's no way around either one of them. Uh, and I recommended... I've recommended a couple of Lincoln books on this channel. I recommended A. Lincoln by Ronald White, a contemporary a modern biography that's, that's really good. I recommended Carl Sandburg's Abraham Lincoln, his, his three-volume set, especially if you can find it in the one-volume Reader's Digest Illustrated Edition. Very nice book to, to have. Uh, but I also wanted to recommend Doris Kearns Goodwin's book, uh, Team of Rivals, which I'm sure you have all seen everywhere. There's got a million copies. One of the rare examples, actually, of a book whose movie cover for its trade paperback is actually nicer looking than its regular trade paperback cover. The regular trade paperback is black with a with a period painting of Lincoln and his cabinet, and the movie cover is white with a stark Daniel Day-Lewis uh, profile in the character of Lincoln. It's, uh, but the book, it's amazing. It's spellbinding reading from start to finish. I, I just love it. It's It deserves all the praise that it gets. Uh, Next on the list, number five, would be Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, I have a lot to say about Theodore Roosevelt, not, not least because one of, the five, one of my five guys, one of the five characters in history who most fascinate me and about whom I know the most was his best friend and successor. Uh, but uh, for Roosevelt himself, an amazing trilogy was written, and it's by Edmund Morris, and it's The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt, Theodore Rex, and The Colonel. Those three books constitute an amazingly written account of one of America's most fascinating presidents. I, Morris is a fantastic writer, and he this these three books are an incredible reading experience. It, I just I can't recommend them high enough, uh, especially the middle one, Theodore Rex. Uh, number six would be Woodrow Wilson, another character, another U.S. president that I hate, uh, but. He was also the subject of a great biography. Uh, August Heckscher is the name of the author. He he did it. It was about thirty years ago. I'll leave I'll leave a link down below. I don't think I I've ever reviewed it, so I'll I'll just I'll just praise it. Uh, Heckscher does a great job of giving you Wilson, the incredibly flawed and petty man, and also giving you the broader canvas of his time, why he was important in his time, which a lot of presidential biographies. Uh, neglect to do. In fact, Edmund Morris, when The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt first came out, critics, a couple of critics, said, well, it's great on the man, but it's poor on the times. I don't agree with that, but uh, it's a definitely a weakness you see in presidential biographies, So, uh, and it isn't present in this one, so I, I recommend it. And then number seven, we go back to the Roosevelt family, <laughs> Franklin Roosevelt, who had many, many terms and was U.S. president during World War II, and that, that you know, propels him to the front of the list anyway. Uh, and I have two uh, recommendations for him. I have uh, uh, Traitor to His Class by H.W. Brands. Brands is another, uh, like uh, like Meacham, he's a professional 
biographer and historian, and he's fantastic. And a uh, trader to his class is really, really good. Uh, but I also wanted to recommend The War Years, FDR, The War Years, by Roger Daniels. He's, it's a, he's just a two-volume uh, set of Roosevelt as a war commander, Roosevelt as a president, and it, they're amazingly good. Uh, incredibly well documented and amazingly good. Uh, then, number eight, it would be John F. Kennedy. And I have read every book there is to read about John F. Kennedy and know more about him than I do about probably any other U.S. president except Roosevelt's successor. <laughs> uh, and of all those books, I, hi I, could make it, I could easily make a starter kit on JFK, easily. And there are, there are many stages in JFK biography that were, there were his men, his retainers, his, his, what they're called, they're called court historians who all, who wrote a shelf full of great books about him. And then there's another generation and then there's another generation. And the, the book, the one book that I would recommend if I had to, if you want to come at it cold, if you want to say, all right, well, I don't want any bias. I just want, I want as close to an actual authoritative Kennedy biography as I can get would be Michael O'Brien's book from 2005. And I'll, I'll mention it down below. I, it, it, that also is new enough so that it might be at your library. And I, if it is, and you are interested in the subject, I recommend it. And then you can go from there backwards to the court histories because they are indispensable American reading. Uh, I should do a whole video on those just to clear the air. <laughs> uh, then number nine would be Richard Nixon, who uh, carved his signature onto international American diplomacy and also ruined the presidency. Did, did more serious harm to the to the public wheel in America than any other single individual in the country's history. Now, those of you who are who are too young to remember Watergate won't believe that uh, because you've seen such outrages in your own day. But uh, nevertheless, I'm here to tell you it's true. <laughs> but that makes him all the more important to something to read about. And I have two suggestions here: one new and one old, newish and one oldish. Uh, the new one is uh, A Life in Full by Conrad Black, who will himself be the subject of scandalous biographies in due time. He led a pretty colorful life on his own. Uh, but his book on Nixon is, is gigantic, and I, I found it uh, quite good. A grain of salt good, but good. Uh, and the other one is an older book. It's called Nixon Agonistes by Gary Wills. And it, it, <laughs> it's it's pretty brutal, and it's deliciously eloquent. I I. <laughs> it's an amazing reading experience and you can't read it cold you can't read it as your first book on nixon but once you have your feet underneath you on nixon and that doesn't take much you should find it and read it uh and the last present we'll do for today is uh ronald reagan uh who i not only know a lot about but actually wrote a lot about when he was in office. <laughs> he made it rather easy to write op-eds. <laughs> uh, and I have two recommendations for him. Uh, the first one is President Reagan by Lou Cannon. Uh, that is, came out, I think the original title was Roll of a Lifetime. It's a, it's a big, fat book. You, it was reissued in a very pretty trade paperback about 15 years ago. Uh, your library will certainly have it, and your used bookstores will certainly have it too. And it is a very good book to read on the subject. No real reason to follow, unless you're really interested in Reagan, there's no real reason to follow canon throughout Reagan's career, but that one big volume is definitely worth your time. And another book, the last one we'll mention for today, is Surreal. It's, it's the strangest, and in my opinion, one of the most beautiful presidential lives ever written, and it's Dutch, by the aforementioned Edmund Morris. A very odd book, an impressionistic book that... Morris was given unprecedented access. He was given access to the president. He was given access to all the president's men. He was given access to all, all tons of documents. And he was baffled by what he found and responded creatively instead of with official live bromides and cliches. Instead of doing what most people do when they, when they are given a commission to write an official life <laughs> he went at it a different way. It's hard to, do, to explain what Dutch is. It's hard to describe it. But uh, I said at the time, the first time that I read it, and then the second time that I read it, I have maintained, and I still maintain, that it is the one of the most impressive and memorable things ever to be created for a president. And uh, again, it's not the book to read if you don't know anything about Reagan, so read a biography first, 
uh, or study the Wikipedia entry and then uh, read Dutch. It, you won't be sorry, though. <laughs> it's an amazing book. Uh, and there you have it. That's a presidential starter kit. I don't appear to be able to get these videos under 15 minutes, but I'll try. <laughs> uh, and I'd love to know in the comments field the presidential books that you have read, if any. I'm assuming that quite a few of you have started or have finished Chernow's Hamilton for obvious reasons, although <laughs> I'm always I'm always reminded of uh, the Lewis Black co comedy, uh, co comedy routine where uh, some idiot blowhard was talking about how Hamilton shouldn't be on the money, shouldn't be on the currency, because, you know, you don't want somebody on the currency who was never president. <laughs> and, and Lewis Black lost his temper as usual and said, I'll bet you a hundred dollars you're wrong, you moron. <laughs> Referring, of course, to who's on the money. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll wrap this up for now, and I will try to remember to put all the annotations down below. And I'll see you soon, BookTube. Thank you.